They won't make it mini. They won't make it fold. And they still won't make that logo glow without some hardcore hackery. But survey says that most of you don't care one bit. You're going to keep buying iPhones no matter what. As you probably know, that's not me. No, sir. I'm an android. And I promise I'm not going to draw this out into a season-long string of engagement bait, will he, won't he episodes. The iPhone doesn't fold, and I'm all in on foldables. And that's that. But even die-hard droids have to deal with the data. The iPhone just keeps gaining momentum at home and abroad. And after a week with the 15 Pro and Pro Max, I've found five features that would make the transition even easier if I switched. If you've seen my hands-on or any of the other hundred from Apple Park and Cupertino last week, you already know you can set the iPhone's new side key to silence the ringer or turn on the flashlight or launch the camera. And there's a veritable fountain of accessibility options as well. But one thing that kind of flew under my radar was the shortcuts option. Turns out it's pretty cool. Select shortcuts in the carousel and you can set the action button to open any app on the phone, which is convenient if you want to quickly identify a song through Shazam, for example. But it goes further with a feature I first saw on the seven-year-old BlackBerry Priv. You can jump right to functions within an app. That means instead of just opening notes, you can hold the button to immediately start a new note or add an alarm inside the clock or jump right into a FaceTime call with your special person. Sure, it's basically a fancy preset, but I don't know, there's something about the simplicity of pressing one button to summon the face of a loved one that's so intimate and easy and just so characteristically Apple. I'd bet money we see this feature called out in a heartstring pulling holiday commercial. If there's one thing I'd change about the action button, it's placement. I get why it's in the same spot as the old volume slider. You want long-time iPhone users to know where to find it, plus it limits the amount of retooling the company has to do. But ergonomically, I've found custom keys work better down lower on the phone frame, where you can more easily hit them one-handed, especially if you use it as a camera shutter. Apple may have been forced into switching from its proprietary lightning connector to the USB port everyone else uses. Thank you, European Union. But I think it's going to pay off for the company in an unexpected way. It makes switching from Android to the iPhone just a little bit easier. It's not just that your charger will still work. Any USB-compliant accessory will, too. So when I plug in the jump drive on which I've preserved gigabytes of photos and internet culture from my college years, I can access those files as easily as I can on my Mac or PC, for better or worse. And when I want to use a USB accessory, like my Earthworks desktop microphone here, well, the iPhone is happy to power that too. Now, it should be said that the cable that comes with the new iPhones doesn't support the faster data transfer speeds you'll need to really make the most of, for example, an external hard drive. You'll have to buy a 3.2 Gen 2 compatible cable separately for that, which some see as a cash grab when you're talking about phones this expensive. But as Quinn Nelson recently pointed out, those faster cables tend to be thicker and less flexible, and most folks don't really need the full throughput anyway. And while the iPhone still can't share its battery power with other devices wirelessly, the new USB port does allow it to do so the old-fashioned way. Plug in your AirPods or Apple Watch, and the phone will meet out some milliamps to its accessories in need at a maximum rate of 4.5 watts. Or you can lend to a friend. Plug in another iPhone, and whichever phone has more battery in the tank will start charging the other. Plug in an Android phone, and you'll be given the choice which device is the donor and which is the recipient. USB-C is not perfect, but I'm very glad it's finally come to the iPhone. Okay, this one's been a long time coming. As with many Apple features, my love for standby, or at least the idea behind it, started over a decade ago with Palm, 
the company that pioneered the first wireless charging phones and tablets, and also figured that, hey, the device should do something useful while it's on a charger. Well, that's exactly what Standby does. Drop the iPhone onto a MagSafe charger and turn it sideways, and you get a persistent clock in one of two styles, along with the current weather conditions. Swipe one over, and you can turn it into a digital picture frame using any of your photo albums. And one more swipe gets you to a ribbon of even more timekeeping options. I'm partial to the world clock myself. When a notification comes in, you get a preview big enough to see from across the room, so you know whether it's worth getting off the couch for. Standby is available to all iPhones upgradable to iOS 17, but it really comes into its own on the 14 and 15 Pro and Pro Max, thanks to the always-on-display options. And yes, it still works, even if you don't carry your iPhone in the nude. Speaking of which, I'm calling out my sponsor dbrand earlier than usual because I never like to miss a good segue opportunity. If you know Mr. Mobile, you know dbrand because I can't stop skinning my devices, Apple or otherwise, with all the real leather they'll send me. Of course, you can choose from a variety of other skins if bovine isn't your bag. And let me be clear. <laughs> Get it? The new transparent ghost cases don't just offer added protection, they come with a zero yellowing guarantee. That means if it gets yellow over time, like so many other transparent cases do, dbrand will replace it for free. dbrand your device, down in the description. I never thought I'd be talking about gaming as anything I'm actually interested in on mobile. Even when I cover custom gaming handsets, I'm always more taken by the aesthetic and the over-the-top features than I am by actual gameplay. And the title Apple gave me early access to test, Resident Evil Village? Much too spooky for this sissy to ever play willingly. But here's what I like about it. It's a real video game. Not a game that's streaming from the cloud, not a watered-down mobile version or a port, but a full-on console game. Apple wants to showcase titles like this because they show off the new GPU and the A17 Pro chipset, but I'm excited for a different reason. I love playing console games on the go. I'm halfway through my second run of Red Dead Redemption 2 as I record this, but I don't want to carry something as big as the Steam Deck to do that. A world where I can play a AAA title on my phone is one that actually interests me, since simpler games like Mario Kart Tour, even Genshin Impact, just don't grab me. Lastly, look, camera comparisons in 2023 are enormously subjective. And frankly, I'm tired of pretending they bring any value to videos like mine. Triple wielding the iPhone, the Galaxy, and the Pixel, and stitching their photos together side by side for the thousandth time only reinforces that. It's not just the tedium of the process or the stress of the season. At, at this point, there's so much processing that goes into each photo that the strengths and weaknesses are barely even consistent anymore. The closest I can come to a universal truth here is that when it comes to zoom, specs still count for a lot. As ingenious as Apple's new telephoto shooter is, the fact remains that it's a 5x optical zoom, whereas Samsung's Ultra packs a 10x option. The closer equivalent in terms of specs is Google's Pixel 7 Pro, but again, it all comes down to the processing. To its credit, Apple does a lot of heavy hauling on the software side to make what it can out of what the optics give it. Sometimes that means it does almost as well as the Samsung. Sometimes it even does better. But when you really need to punch in, Samsung's bolstered optics and its extra few years in the Super Zoom game give it more clarity and more focus reliability, too. When tracking this V22 Osprey orbiting New York City ahead of the UN General Assembly, the iPhone lost focus more often than the S23 Ultra, which was pretty annoying. Tally it all together, and for telephoto, I still recommend the Samsung if you're bird watching. Step back from that super zoom, and we're back to punch for punch. You know, sometimes the iPhone wins the day, other times it's the Pixel or the Samsung, but most often it really just boils down to personal preference. I'll have more to share in a future video when I can photograph some more humans, something the iPhone absolutely prioritizes with its processing. And Apple continues to retain its crown on the video side, even without accounting for all the new pro features I don't know how to use. If that makes you apprehensive, angry, accusatory, Mr. Mobile sold out, yeah, <laughs> I get it. It's alarming for Android's long-term prospects. 
And to repeat what I said at the top, I'm not switching to the iPhone. But if you think this is just one vlogger crying wolf, well, look, foldables wouldn't even be a thing if Motorola and Samsung hadn't been forced to compete with Apple on hardware. And from a platform perspective, just look at what Google's doing. Doubling down on marketing the Pixel, attacking Apple on RCS to diminish its iMessage advantage, and refining its smartwatch and earbuds, and, and I guess its tablet, to offer a full-service solution. This is the true benefit to competition, not catfights in the comments, but real improvements from companies under threat. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max is quite a threat indeed. This video was produced following one week with an iPhone 15 Pro Max review sample provided by Apple, but do I even need to say it? Apple provided no payment and received no editorial input into this content, nor an early preview of same. Please follow me at Captain Two Phones on Threads and Twitter and subscribe to The Mr. Mobile so you don't miss upcoming coverage on foldables, smartwatches, laptops, and yes, more iPhone stuff. Till next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.